Rise PC release is about to drop and I have to ask, are you ready? Do you know what weapon you're going to main? Maybe you're even jumping into Rise for the first time, now it's finally on PC, or maybe you're back for the wild ride once again, but this time with a lot more FPS. Either way, there is a good chance that a refresh on the weapons and their state in Rise could help you decide what to try. So my name is Hollow, welcome back to Rage Gaming, and these are the 14 weapons of Rise. For you newer players in Rise, I'm going to have a top 3 weapons to play as a beginner player, as the final 3, so let's just get into it. Starting with one of my favorite weapons to have in my arsenal in Rise, it is of course the bow. What I love about the bow is its incredible mobility, which is actually a direct part of the combat, where you level up through dodging to do more damage, or maybe you're even just parried a blow because you evaded. The bow, despite its ranged ability, is actually more of a mid to close range weapon, often described as the shotgun style of range, which I can agree with. With the bow, you'll need to increase your charge level by firing out shots, holding those shots, or dashing while drawn. To then increase your damage at higher levels. Of course, a main aspect of the bow is the arrow coatings though, where you can coat your arrows with status ailments for a variety of purposes, depending on what the monster is weak to, or just give yourself some raw damage coating, whatever you need. In Rise, the bow has some incredible new effects and benefits to use and abuse, like the new arc shots that can buff or heal your allies, but also the siltbind attacks. Aerial aim is this new awesome leap straight up into the air, which then lets you loose three bursts of arrows, which extends your airtime on each shot, ending in an arrow plunge attack. Focus shot is the less exciting but still useful leap backwards silt bind, land in a crouch and then recover stamina quickly. Plus that backward leap also provides a brief immunity so good in a pinch. Lastly though Herculean draw is the all important damage buff. So that's an attack boost for 30 seconds after you use it. Ultimately a great boat player is one who manages their stamina well, plays with fire up and close and makes the most out of their various immunities and evasions naturally tied to the bow. Moving on to our next weapon then, the charge blade. Often referred to as the Swiss army knife weapon. It's a morphing sword and shield that turns into a two-handed axe. Very easy to overcomplicate in explanation, so I'm going to keep this simple. The charge blade aims to charge up its sword and shield to fill its vials. These vials are spent in various ways, which generally enhance other attacks or unleash that iconic super element discharge. So at its core, you charge up with the sword and then you unleash with the two-handed axe. It's a powerhouse that is flashy and satisfying when played right, but may be intimidating to a newer user because it's a bit complicated. Our Siltbind attacks though are as follows. Morphing Advance, which pulls you forward while transforming to Axe Mode, during which you're completely immune to knockbacks and stuns. Counter Peak Performance is the extremely useful guard and protect yourself from any attack, and if hit, fully fill your vials to max. Lastly, Axe Hopper will have you leap up into the air and then unleash an aerial element discharge, dealing damage on the way up and of course on the way down. In conclusion, the Charge Blade suits a jack of all trades player who likes to have it all with multiple weapons in one, like the ability to guard and parry, while also being able to deal huge, flashy attacks when the time is right. Next up then, the weapon I think I might be maining on PC, the Jewel Blades. This duo provides the Hunter with some of the best mobility in the game, alongside some of the fastest attacks and huge combos. It is a stamina goblin though, but extremely powerful in the right hands. Enter the demon mode and watch as your stamina begins to drain, while you're also powered up with better evasion and bigger combos. If you attack during this, you'll power up the blades and be able to enter Arch Demon Mode, a less stamina draining alternative to the Demon Mode. At its core, the Jewel Blades is all about dealing constant damage through many fast hits while continuously evading the monster's attacks at the same time. Particularly exciting in Rise, though, is the aerial nature of the Jewel Blades. If you choose to go that route, thanks to its new leap into the air attacks, you can be spinning down the monster's spine from anywhere now. Who even needs a slide or a ledge? And with the Feral Demon Mode, you can do even more aggressive things like attacking during basic evades. The Siltbind attacks though are these. Piercing Bind, which sticks a kunai into the monster, which will blow up for some damage after a period, but if you attack while it's attached, you'll increase the damage that explosion will do. Tower Vault provides the extra aerial movement, launching you up into the air after landing a blow, and then we can do all our different aerial attack options from up here. Shrouded Vault is the absolute dream of a counter attack for Jewel Blades. Launch forward and trigger your counter attack if hit during, and you'll spin an attack at the same time. Super cool to have that as a Jewel Blades user. My conclusion on Jewel Blades then is that they're pretty easy to pick up and use, but a master Jewel Blades player will just show you this onslaught of never-ending blows while flowing around the monster. Moving on to Rage's favourite then, the iconic Greatsword. This heavy slab of a weapon will sap your mobility in exchange for some of the hardest hitting attacks to be found. You must charge up your blows before unleashing them to deal huge numbers, assuming you position well beforehand because it does take a while to do that. 
that. Still, the quick and less charged attacks are extremely powerful, so making use of when you can charge up or when you need to do a quick attack is where the skill comes in. Now, with the Siltbind attacks and of course the wire bugs in general, the slower movement of the greatsword and that lacking mobility is actually addressed pretty well in Rise, giving you the option to fly through the air and position quickly at a moment's notice. The Siltbind attacks are as follows. Power Sheath, a quick dash forward before an attack buff on all of your following attacks during. Super important before you do your main hits. Hunting Edge, which will help the slow movement a lot by leaping forward and then on hit, choosing between a powerful charge slash or a plunging thrust from up high. And lastly, the Adamant Charge Slash is a great sword user's dream, letting you dash forward before doing a charge slash. But during this, your body hardens to ignore any knockdowns. Awesome. In conclusion, the great sword makes for an incredible beginner's weapon because it's quite easy to pick up and play with, but a master great sword player makes the fight look like art and take a lot less time. Unleashing hell from carefully positioned spots, bashing through damage, and continuing on to land the biggest single hits in the game. Speaking of heavier weapons though, it's time to talk Lance. Boasting an incredibly strong shield, the Lance can take on incoming blows with ease, never really backing down or worrying about evading. This is the ultimate charging weapon though, where you can sprint around and plunge your Lance deep into the monster. It's got solid reach, meaning you can easily poke and stab any monster part you're aiming for, and is surprisingly mobile thanks to the wirebug movement and the new Siltbind options. And it's quite funny to watch at times as well. This is evident when we look at the Siltbind attack, Twin Vine, which stabs a kunai into the monster and then attaches the hunter to that, letting you fly in from ridiculous ranges while guarding. That monster cannot escape. Anchor Rage is the more reasonable block, boosting your attack power when absorbing blows, turning the monster's power against it. And lastly, Spiral Thrust is this two-step dash attack where you can charge forward after a parry and thrust with the lance. It's a monster-confusing maneuver. In conclusion though, the lance is quite simple in concept, easy to pick up and play, simple combos with great reach and angles of attack. The better Lance players will make use of their attacks to correctly position during combos, maintaining their uptime despite any attack being thrown at them. Now let's talk Gun Lance. The ridiculous combination of cannon and lance to blast monsters with. Between its lance and shield though, you can block most incoming blows safely and retaliate with stabs and swing combos, all while continuously shelling out explosions to blow the monster away. Much lower in mobility compared to the lance though, the Gun Lance boasts a wide selection of point blank blasts with huge impact. Having one of the coolest attacks in the game as well, the Wyvern Fire Shot. These are its Siltbind attacks. The Guard Edge, which guards you from all attacks. If hit during though, you regenerate some weapon sharpness and can follow up with certain attacks. Hail Cutter is the more flashy leap up with a rising strike and come back down with the overhead slam and even end it with a blast. This reduces the cooldown on Wyvern's Fire, which is very important. Lastly, Ground Splitter, which has you dash forward and jump up into an attack. You heat the barrel up during this, which actually buffs the damage of your shells and shots and wyvern fire. My conclusion on the gun lance then is that much like the lance, it provides a different playstyle in Monster Hunter to try. Don't really worry so much about evading, just go toe to toe. But this time you have a huge cannon. Continuing on with our big weapons then, it's time to talk hammer. The KO inducing hammer loves to bonk heads for some big numbers, just like the greatsword. It's sort of the ultimate blunt weapon. You'll charge up the attacks to unleash various blows based on your movement and charge level, but you can actually charge while moving, which is awesome. So careful positioning and and maybe hit and run tactics are great for hammer users who must commit to long combos or slow swings leaving them vulnerable during. But since you're bonking heads, the monster will often be stunned or even knocked down, which gives you free reign to bonk to your heart's content. The new silt binds are incredible though. Impact Crater is the satisfying leap up where you hit multiple times and then drop down with a crater creating smash. Spinning Bludgeon has you charge up while pulling on a wire bug before letting it launch you forward, spinning like a human Beyblade. Lastly, the Dash Breaker has you attack while dashing forward, ignoring any damage during, so a well-timed Dash Breaker can be pretty clutch. In conclusion, though the hammer is easy to pick up and play and really good for a new player who's learning the game who wants to use a hit and run style. A master though knows the ins and outs of every monster to continuously be abusing its forehead with those big bonks. Speaking of blunt weapons, now let's talk Hunting Horn, which grew massively in popularity. The Hunting Horn is a buff machine, a weapon combined with an instrument. You play out different notes to various combinations to let your songs ring out, and these can be extremely useful damage buffs, defense buffs, health recovery and more for you and your team, all while you're bonking like crazy. In Rise, the Hunting Horn became more aggressive 
and easier to use, alongside extra flashy attacks with the new Siltbind stuff. The slide beat spins you forward, ignoring any knockbacks, swinging and slamming attacks while ending in a performance for a status boost, which is super strong. Earthshaker is the coolest Siltbind attack in my opinion. Attaching a stake to the monster and then blasting a sonic wave through that wire bug to blow it away and break its eardrums. Lastly, the awkward bead of resonance places a wire bug cocoon that plays out melodies your hunter is playing, as well as doing a bit of sonic wave damage to any enemy nearby. My conclusion on the hunting horn in Rise, though, is extremely positive. Not only does it look so much cooler now, Rise also made the weapon more approachable for a new user, so I can see why a lot of people are playing it. Now let's move on to the Switch Axe, another transforming weapon in the set. Where you swap from huge axe to giant sword, the Switch Axe combines two heavy weapons into one. The axe is the more mobile option of the two, with wide swings to make use of, while the sword, on the other hand, is much more static, but with big heavy hits and big combos. You build up your gauge in axe mode to swap to sword, to then unleash attacks and build up the awakening gauge. When that's full, it starts to discharge the file effects and leads to the iconic zero-sum discharge. Latching onto a monster when that sword gauge is full before blasting the face to bits. This is a builder spender at its core, and the Siltbind attacks provide some utility to help with the longer animations of the weapon. Switch Charger dashes forward while filling your switch gauge, even buffing it to prevent depletion for a period. Invincible Gambit gives you this body of steel. You move forward while spinning and swinging, while also immune to any flinching or knockbacks. A very strong combo to just pull out. Soaring Wyvern Blade, on the other hand, has you you fly upwards first before stabbing down from high and if that lands you'll not only fill the gauge but you'll do a little zero sum explosion on the monster too i find the switch axe easy to pick up and play in theory but quite hard to use in the reality of combat without getting struck in those long animations Moving on, let's talk Insect Glaive, the aerial hunter's dream, especially in Rise. At face value, the glaive is quite complicated. You have your Kinsect to manage, and then a mix of either ground or aerial combat to use. Using the Kinsect, you just aim for specific parts of monsters to get different benefits. The Kinsect will return with a different color based on where you hit, and that will give you a buff. Red increases attack power, white increases movement speed, orange even provides knockback protection during certain attacks. These buffs also enhance your moveset, so you must manage and maintain them at all times. As mentioned, the aerial machine lets you leap up into the air, but then also dash forward from up there. Bounce off the target and continue to do so, stamina willing, for as long as you want, until you decide to plunge attack back down. On the ground, we have access to a few strong combos to make best use of when the monster can't catch you. So, moving around the fight from air, from ground, using your awesome movement just feels really good. These are the Siltbind attacks though. Siltbind Vault has you leap forward with a jumping slash or an advancing slash or a mid-air evade, which provides great mobility in the fight. Recall Kinsect calls your Kinsect back while also having you dodge. That Kinsect then provides healing on its way back and recovers its stamina entirely upon its return. Finally, the Diving Wyvern is the combat Siltbind. Drawn down into a dive by the pull of a wire bug, from the air you plunge at huge speed like a Dragoon for great damage on a specific area of impact. Overall, the Insect Glaive remains one of the coolest and freest feeling weapons in Monster Hunter. The ability to fly and fight, target any body part, evade in entirely unique ways to this weapon, it's really cool. It may be intimidating at first with its different aspects, but it's quite smooth once you understand it. Now let's talk guns, specifically heavy bow gun. How would I describe this strange weapon? A machine gunner or a hand cannon? It's up to you. The slow moving powerhouse that fights at range has a long list of ammo types to make use of. Having you drop cluster bombs on a target, shoot shotgun like shells or pierce damage to get straight for a long enemy. Maybe you want to use status ailments depending on the weakness of that monster. And now in Rise, you can charge up your shots for even greater effect. So you got lots of options. Unlike the light version, it trades mobility for defense. So it's able to guard or unleash one of two super moves when you've built up enough. That's Wyvern Heart or Wyvern Sniper, depending on what you choose to bring. The Siltbind attacks give it some options to help with that. Siltbind Glide lets you dash in a direction to do a quick attack or a fast sheath to get out of there. Counter Shot is the counter attack, giving you immunity to any attack and then retaliate with a powerful shot upon success. Counter Charge, on the other hand, 
works the same, but rather than retaliating with an attack, you get a buff. Now your charge shots take much less time for better output in the fight. In conclusion, the heavy bowgun is the heavy hitting, slow moving beefcake of the bowguns and is quite easy to use, but certainly takes skill to avoid hits in combat. All right, that's 11 of the 14 weapons, but as I said, the last three are gonna be the ones I recommend to a brand new player. Starting with the sword and shield, the extremely versatile and forgiving SNS is a good option for a new player to begin with for many reasons, but also has a lot of in-depth options that a great player can make use of. As an easy to understand weapon, it was actually recommended by the devs for a long time as the weapon for a new player to start with while they're learning the game. Certainly with how you can use items while the weapon is still out. Plus it has great options like the aerial leaps and also hey, a shield that can block a lot of nasty attacks. But as I said, with high potential, like with the timings of the perfect rush or the parry style options where a masterful player can really make the SNS shine. These are the Siltbinder attacks though. Falling Shadow, a leaping attack that on hit can lead to an extra leap up and then a shield bash from up high, which is great for evasion or even gap closing. Windmill being one of the first silk binds we ever saw swings the blade around at the end of the silk for a wide range multi-attack hit even ignoring monster attacks at the start of this cast metsu show ryogeki is the leaping attack using your shield to uppercut the monster in this you can also perform a perfect guard if timed well which will counter the attack and then also increase the damage you do as i said though this is an easy weapon to pick up and understand with great options for a new player like yeah healing without putting your weapon away but masterful options like the perfect guard to make the weapon and really sing. Next in my top three suggestions for a new play on Rise then has to be the Light Bowgun. Not only is the Light Bowgun more forgiving than its heavy counterpart due to its great mobility, but God is it strong in Rise. It was extremely popular because it was so strong. The weapon is easy to pick up and use thanks to how fast you move while firing compared to the heavy Bowgun. It has all ammo types compared to the heavy actually and has both the Wyvern Blast and Element Reload. While yet yeah, it doesn't have guarding or charge shots, it certainly makes up for it with consistent DPS. You can keep moving, blasting, moving, evading, and blasting all the time. And the silk binds help even more. The silk bind glide has you gliding forward before doing a close shot. The fanning vault is really cool. You vault up into the air and then fire from above or reload while moving or drop wyvern blast like you're a human basil bomber. Lastly, the fanning maneuver lets you swing and slide wide, left or right for huge mobility all while firing, letting you evade and attack at the same time. It even buffs your attack power, so it's so strong. And this is why I suggest this as a great option for a new player with its many options, great mobility and consistent DPS. And it's extremely meta in the end game, so you can't hate that. Finally, we are at our last weapon, and of course, one of my top three for a new player, this is the Longsword. I speak as a long-time Longsword main that in Rise, Longsword has become more effective and also way easier. The classic parry-style play using iframes to avoid attacks as they're about to land, and then return with your own powerful strikes to level any beast. It comes with the simple system of leveling up your sword to increase its damage through various combos, or better, through various parries. And then you spend it all with either a powerful Siltbind counter, or more likely, the iconic Helm Splitter attack, where you leap up into the air and slam down with a world-splitting slice. Even stronger in Rise, though, because the mobility of Helm Splitter's leap, and then how you go up in the air and come back down even faster now makes you less vulnerable for less time. Not to mention with the parrying, we now have better quick sheath so we can parry even easier too. These are the silk binds though. We have the serene pose which has you take this flashy stance and then strike with a powerful counter attack if you were hit during it. Soaring kick is the silk bind tied to the helm splitter. You can leap forward and then connect with the monster choosing to plunge down to auto fill your gauge for a period or spend it all with the Helm Splitter. Lastly, we also have Secura Slash, which is a spinning slice that levels up your gauge on success, dealing damage multiple times. Longsword has been one of the most popular weapons for a long time, perhaps due to how flashy and also easy it is to pick up. Masterful players, however, have the record speedrunning times with perfect parries back to back through insane control of the monster. With the rise changes, it is even stronger and easier to use with more options where you might need them. So even the devs have started to say, hey, new players, you should try the longsword. However, that is it. All 14 weapons and the general theme and function of all of them and what happened to them in Rise. I hope that was useful or interesting. And if it was, please drop a like on the video. Do you guys know what you're going to main on PC? Do you know what you're going in with? I think I want to give Jewel Blades a proper go this time, but I'm also very tempted by Light Bowgun because it looks really good. Until next time, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thanks for watching.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage. Is, uh, goodbye.